All right. Welcome to Unshakable Live. Uh, and uh, today we have an exciting show. We're going to be talking about, most importantly, Christ. We'll be talking about our culture and uh, some of the current issues that are happening around the world and also here in Glendale and, most importantly, in your life. So, and of course, uh, we're always open to pray with you, talk with you, and if you want to argue about different <coughs> issues, especially the Christian faith, um, you're an agnostic, you're an atheist, or you're a Jesus hater, uh, please call the show. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Um, we're not afraid and there's no censorship. Just try not to cuss because little kids and grandmothers are watching the show. No, I'm just joking. No, but on the reals, <laughs> we do want you to call in. We do want to talk to you about anything you're going through. Maybe you're on the verge of committing suicide. Maybe you're on the verge of killing someone. Uh, again, we take you very seriously, and so does God. Uh, give us a call. We know how life's pressures can sometimes uh, bring a lot of uh, crazy thoughts into our minds, and if those things aren't dealt with, they can lead into actions, and actions have reactions and consequences. So once again, I'm glad to be with you. My name is Pastor Jack. I'm going to introduce the dynamic duo. This is Ani. Demirjan, how you doing, Ani? Good, thank you. Good, good. What's good God? Good to have you back. All right. <laughs> the blessing. So what's going on with you? What's God doing with you? Just learning a lot, you know, going to school and um, learning a lot about him, a lot about myself, a lot about m ministry and stuff. So it's good. It's a good learning process, Amen. everything. What's one of the key things that you're learning right now in your life? Definitely it is to, because, um, you know, you get so wrapped up in studying the Word of God, mm -hmm. but its application can sometimes, you know, be forgotten okay but definitely learning to you know apply his word that's the only reason we study it is to apply it correctly in our lives okay and, you know so um uh, yeah definitely application of scripture yeah. is so important amen and uh what's one of your favorite classes at life pacific um right now it's definitely theology theology mm -hmm. okay okay we got a theologian <laughs> in our midst um that's awesome uh I, I definitely want to come back to you and ask you to share some maybe a scripture or passage that God has really been, you know, speaking to. So I want to give you the heads up warning okay. to start <laughs> flipping through the word. Um, okay. It's always awesome to have sisters in the Lord on this show with us because they bring, um, first of all, a female perspective to Christianity, but also um, there are sometimes a voice that you don't get to hear in the church because I think a lot of churches have suppressed the voice of women and, uh, and, and therefore uh, the women's issues don't come to the table, especially in, in the Armenian uh, culture. Uh, so, Arthur, how you doing, bro? What's up, Jack? Good, good, good. So, what's going on with you? What, what's God doing? What's going on in your life? Um, definitely uh, uh, re-emergence of passion for okay. Christ. Okay, okay. Um, I honestly think, uh, you know, to have a boldness uh, for the gospel, reading through Acts, mm -hmm. you know, as you can just continuously see that uh, Peter and John and the apostles were filled by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and spoke in boldness and took a stand. Okay. So, uh, I would say that's, I, I can put my finger on that in my life, so. Okay, okay. Definitely. Great, great. Um, well, today uh, we're going to talk about some different things. Um, and again, uh, we want you to call in. And uh, if you have any, you know, questions or, or um, um, concerns, uh, call in. We'd definitely love to um, hear what you have to, what to uh, say. Um, some of the, one of the most interesting things that, I'm finding right now is this whole uh, Britney Spears issue, mm -hmm. and I think um, you know because because for me you know when we do Unshakable Live you know we're we're definitely outspoken Christians, and we we definitely try to have a biblical Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. And I'm always you know when I watch some of the news and I watch some of what's going on around the world, and I look at people's lives, I'm always thinking you know what's the Lord thinking about this? And uh, I just want to <laughs> you know share this article from People Magazine basically. You know, many of you guys, if you watch the news and mm -hmm. you watch the tabloids, uh, I guess Britney Spears' father uh, took over conservatorship, you know, in her life. And this article says, um, basically, uh, on a domestic front, her family is caring for the pop star. Uh, and basically, her brother, Brian Spears, is acting as co-trustee of her trust. But what's interesting, it says um, um, that you know, they think that she's going crazy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and that, you know, she's kind of losing it, you know? And I know a lot of people have different opinions about Britney Spears, and, and she was such a pop icon figure. 
and I'm sure there was a lot of Armenian girls out there at one point that bought Britney Spears albums and stuff. So mm. what's, for me, what's, what's amazing is how she's like a byword now. She's a proverb in people's lips, mm. you know, like she's, some, she's, she's a name that people would use to uh, make fun of or as an example of, in a sense, foolishness. And, 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 and so I know that she came from a kind of a Christian church background and, and uh, you know, Midwest, kind of typical yeah, yeah. white family. And, and I mean, uh, what your, what, what's your thoughts on Britney Spears, you know, and what she represents, I think, to the culture of America? And, and how does Jesus, how, did, what is Christ, how does Christianity speak into Britney Spears and her type of lives, these broken lives, you know, either because of their sins or things that have happened to them. Any thoughts on her? I know you guys have thought about her and have something to say. Um, well, I just, I honestly feel very, very bad for her. Yeah. I can't, like, every time I think about Britney Spears, my heart breaks because yes. of just the situation that she is in because she's so hopeless and people do look at her negatively and um, it's kind of like that video that came out of th that one person saying, you know, leave Britney alone. Mm -hmm. I kind of already feel mm -hmm. like that now. Because, yeah. You know, like, just leave the girl alone because um, people don't understand here in America that, uh, you know, celebrities, they they are people too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're like, she's a daughter of God. Yeah. You know, God created her. God is still the same God to her that he is to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just thinking about that and thinking about, you know, what, what he must be feeling for her and, you know, kind of how he his heart breaks for her and, you know, just, it's kind of, I feel like, I really feel sorry for her. So, um, it, we need to get and uh, start understanding that celebrities are just people too. And especially, you know, pushing pushing them to the limit yeah. like, as the way that they have with Britney Spears. It's, um, it's, it's really unfair and, you know, uh, yeah. it's sad. And I think, you know, we need to leave her at a place where she needs to start dealing with her problems. Yeah. And, you know, I believe God will intervene. And, you know, yeah. as long as... Sometimes we feel like we can't pray for celebrities because, oh, they're celebrities and mm. stuff. But, you know, I think it's important that we pray for them. And That's interesting because we have to ask the question, do we even have prayer being offered up? One okay. of the things we talked about this week, even in our church, we were talking about, me and some of the members, we're talking about the need for more prayer in our church. Mm. And I'm wondering, because I know there's churches that feel called to reach out to Hollywood that literally have prayer meetings, one hour, two hour prayer meetings for celebrities. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, why don't we do that? Like, do we really care as Christians? Right. Like, and I think the amount of our caring is shown in our prayer life. And I think the lack of prayer that goes on in a lot of our churches, even here in Glendale, shows that we really don't believe, A, that God can help, and B, we don't really care. Mm -hmm. We talk about people, we talk about their problems, but yet we know that prayer is the one of the beginning steps of solving people's problems because we're asking God to not give up in his intervention. We're asking God to... Uh, maybe send people to mm -hmm. them to to create certain circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. But what about Arthur? The people who say Britney Spears deserves everything she gets because she's a basically um, a spoiled brat who, you know, made the wrong choices. And 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 is is there a place for that kind of thinking? Uh, absolutely, I think so. I think uh, I think uh, we have to give people their uh, their moral responsibility. Um, I don't care who it is if if they make certain choices in life. Okay. Um, then they're held responsible for it. It could be good ones, it could be bad ones, but it's it's their choice. Uh, I wouldn't totally agree with those people. Um, I, I I think there there's more to the situation than uh, people like that make state you know statements like that that you know she's spoiled and she's this and that. Mm -hmm. I think I think one thing we can learn from her is to look at her and and this is how hypocritical our our uh, Western culture is. This is what the United States is is that we create someone. Mm -hmm. We're involved in the creation of a being, mm -hmm. right? So we bring like him into ideology. This, yeah, we bring him into this into this um, God state where people literally like worship them. I mm -hmm. mean, look at the way they they live their, their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, they they become idols. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, kind of fits with the whole Hollywood scene, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they become idols in in our lives. We create them. We create their desires, their passions. We put all this stuff around them, and then when they go bad. Mm -hmm. Or when they go the way we don't want them to go, right. we start looking at them and judging them. Mm. Well, if we're involved in the per, uh, in the production of these people, why are we being so hypocritical? Mm. What's so wrong with the stuff she's doing? Because all, that's all our culture teaches. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what does our culture teach? Morality is relative. Mm -hmm. You know, we're uh, you know uh, it's interesting that um, I was actually listening to the teaching, and this guy was reading an article, and in the article, this woman is actually saying that. Um, 
uh, basically she says, I, 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 the most liberating thing in my life was when I found out that I had the right to rebel against my mother mm -hmm. and hate her actually. Mm -hmm. And then the author uh, of the article goes on to say, you know, there's a lot we can learn about, uh, uh, about community from our closest relatives, the chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we, there's a lot we can learn about marriage from the homosexual community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, our culture says these things and, and these things have consequences. Where my response to that is, there's a lot we can learn from the Word of God. Yes. What does God say about this? Let's not look at some animals. If we're looking at some animals, then you know, there's a lot we can learn from lions. You know, lions mm -hmm. go crazy and, and, and kill other animals. So let's do it this, uh, the same way. Yeah. So th there's a lot of perversion in animals. You know, mm -hmm. Dogs are sleeping around with everyone. So let's just act like dogs. Mm -hmm. But we don't think like that. But people, pe some people think like that and it's being pushed. Mm -hmm. And when people start acting like that, then we start complaining. I think it's hypocritical. Well. And, and also, um, especially in America, we, we live through our celebrities. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so their success is, becomes our success. And, you know, uh, the famous athlete, you know, one person who really wants to play sports but, you know, doesn't do anything about it, just uh, lives that life through, like, Kobe Bryant or somebody like that. Okay. So when they begin to upset us and do things that we ourselves do, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's people who do the same things that Britney Spears has done and other people have done, but it's just not so much in the public eye. So we see that and we're like, you know, it's mm. kind of like wear face with, you know, reality that, you know, there aren't really yeah. It's easier people, to point you know? a finger. It's, it's mm -hmm. beautiful, you know, like, uh, so you look at uh, these celebrities who are getting divorced like crazy, mm. okay, they have no sense of uh, faithfulness and community and loyalty within marriage and stuff like that, and they're getting divorced, and it's easy, everybody points the finger and says, oh, look at this guy, they've been married, you know, four, five, eight times or whatnot, but yet if we were to look around all the people in our communities, all the broken home in our communities that aren't in the public eye, nobody's pointing fingers at them. Yeah. Most kids, most kids here in Glendale uh, that I come across are coming out of Armenian and non-Armenian from broken families. Yeah, you know it's a trip because I was thinking about that this week that uh, a lot of our Armenian families are broken, and uh, you know mm -hmm. Britney Spears, you know here she is on medication, mm -hmm. uh, she's in the courtroom all the time, uh, she's always you know shown as kind of crazy, but yet I mean like you said I think that. Um, a lot of our families are broken. You know, as a pastor, I get a special insight into Armenian families. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, I'm a, I'm a sociologist in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I get to watch and observe not only uh, the outside external general community as they walk around the city, uh, and not only our city, but every city. But um, since I work here in Glendale, but mm -hmm. also get an internal look at what's going on on a microscopic level in our Armenian families. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of brokenness. There's mm -hmm. a lot of pain. There's a lot of um, anger, you know, and um, and not to say we're perfect in any sense. Meka, uh, you know, Tsabunik, Meka, 100%, you know, Chenkaler, you know, Jampambo Bitkunik, we always walk in. We don't always walk the walk and talk mm -hmm. the talk either. Right. Um, and so, but I think the, the, the issue here is, like with Brittany, is when do you get to a place where you're no longer sane, you're no longer um, um, functional, mm -hmm. you know? And you're and you're just dysfunctional. So I think you know uh, we need to pray for Britney Spears. And if anyone's watching today, you know we can watch these celebrities and sometimes feel very distant from them. Mm -hmm. But not until we find ourselves in a maze, we find ourselves in so much pain because of the sins that we have committed or the sins that people have committed to her. And I think you know um, there's a lot of stuff that's been done to her. Mm -hmm. You know uh, when you're when when you're famous like that and you're a celebrity. Everyone's trying to grab at you, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, um, and, and it's and it's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, even you know, even it, it really is. I mean, so, if they can p take your picture and sell it for you know a couple of hundred thousand dollars uh, to some tabloid, uh, you know, so you, you can't even back out from a parking spot because there's so many people surrounding you. I mean, it's, it's it, it really sucks and it's sad. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a celebrity in our culture. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's some celebrities who are smarter than others. They keep themselves away. Yeah. You know, they're not in the spotlight. They just, you know, they distance themselves. And I think that's what, if there's any celebrities watching the show today, because we know that some of them live in Glendale and Burbank, uh, you know, our prayers and go out for you. And, and, and I think we as a church need to be more committed to praying for celebrities. I pray that God would uh, inspire prayer in, in, in all the churches in Glendale and Burbank for celebrities and people of all positions, mm -hmm, uh, yeah. political, and, and we would not just sit there on the sidelines and critique these people's sins. Because I think churches, 
Christians get into a very dangerous place when they stop praying for people because we're naturally, as humans, we judge. We like to judge people and think the most negative. And I think prayer is a buffer. Mm -hmm. It stops us from losing all hope and all faith and all love for people. Because when you're praying for people, there's a sense that you're, 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 you're connected with God's heart for people mm -hmm. and you don't get so cynical. I think people who pray a lot have a lot of faith and hope in their words and in their presentation because they've been praying to God for men. So when they speak of, of two men, there's a sense that God is right. with them. You know, and I think I, there's a healthy balance. I think um, I think the Bible speaks about judgment. It's, uh, Jesus Christ said, "Do not judge based on appearance, but uh, judge righteously." Yeah. So uh, and like I, anyone that you know knows, knows anything about the media knows that the media blows things out of proportion. Mm -hmm. They try to catch you at the worst time. So a lot of the stuff we didn't see on TV, we can't just go on judging by because it's not true. Yeah. You know they they don't have the full story there. Yeah. They just like to take bits and pieces and kind of present people like awkward. We know there's a go there's a problem going on with with her, specifically. But you know. We have to judge righteously in that situation. Yeah. We have to see deep into her, and we have to critique the situation and what our culture is and what she's like, and also dedicate to uh, you know praying and, and caring for her in, in whatever way that uh, God has called us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another story that I think is pretty big that um, you know people need to be uh, praying for is this whole shooting in Northern Illinois mm -hmm. at uh, the university. Uh, here's a little uh, quote from BBC News. It says around the corner is the building itself where a 27-year-old former student here had, here had strode in during geology lecture and opened fire. Imagine seeing that, a man dressed all in black. He brings his gun up and fires at your teacher. You see him swinging towards the lecture theater and realize he's about to fire again. All you hear, if your brain does not shut out these details, is the sound of the bullets being fired, about 50 of them, we are told. You hear screams, perhaps smell the gunpowder, see the blood, you would never be able to forget these seconds of horror. And thousands of others on campus will also never truly forget. I spoke to some students as they wandered through the university, the reporter says. Uh, within minutes of the attack, they said text messages and emails were warning them to stay indoors. They were put under lockdown. Alex Hari told me he had tried to ring his parents, but so many people were trying to use the mobile network that the phone stopped working. He said he was feeling better today, but I felt he still had a lot to get through. So basically he talks about this shooting uh, where this gentleman walked into the geology class and just starts shooting the teacher. Mm -hmm. And of course I have certain thoughts that ran through my mind as I heard the news. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts uh, concerning that incident that you've been thinking about? I know you want to be a school teacher, so I'm sure <laughs> that kind of affects, you know? Yeah, um, yeah when, I, when I heard about this, it, um, number one, it really says that there's no place where we can be safe. Um, I don't care how much security you have, uh, yeah. you know, you just, you just, you got to be um, very aware of things. Number two, this is the big one. We've had four shootings within a week yeah. on campuses. This is the fourth one, actually. Mm, mm, mm. Um, anywhere from, uh, from 15 years old to 27, this guy, within those ranges. So there's a 15-year-old kid who shot uh, people up in, uh, at uh, Oxnard, I think. Yes. Um, so, um, again, uh, my concern is I want to go into education. You know, um, you're always going to come to uh, across different kinds of people. Um, same thing happens in churches. We come across uh, many different kinds of people, different uh, things people are struggling with. But here's, I think, again, it, it kind of goes back. What a culture believes dictates the way we act. Mm -hmm. You know, I always like to give the example of uh, India. Mm -hmm. um, in India, the be belief in Hinduism, they believe in karma. If you're struggling in life, that means because uh, you've done something in the past life, mm. and you're reaping better, basically in this life whatever you've done. So if you're struggling, if you're homeless, you're an orphan, they necessarily don't tend to help people mm -hmm. uh, because uh, because that's just justice to them. You know, you've done something in a, uh, and karma's kind of getting back at you. And we see the perfect picture of Mother Teresa. She goes in this culture yeah. with the love of Christ, uh, knowing Jesus. She revolutionized the culture. We saw the same thing happening in India when William Carey, a Christian missionary, went in there and revolutionized this culture. You talk to any Indian person, they know about William Carey mm -hmm. because of the things he's done, because of Christ. Our culture has certain beliefs, yeah. certain ideas, certain philosophical presuppositions. Yeah. That's being that either you know by ignorance uh, or you know, you know, you've thought about it and you go, oh, I agree with this. Well, no, I agree with you. I do believe that education or belief systems do affect behavior. 
but they're not able, I believe, to change the whole Absolutely person. Absolutely not. And this is and th this is where it becomes uh, the problem is that we're going to sit down and analyze this guy. Yeah. People will sit down and analyze this guy and say, okay, he had psychological problems. Mm -hmm. He had belief problems. He had this. He had that. He had medical imbalances. He had all this stuff. All that stuff could be good. All that stuff could be true. But they don't get to the root of the problem. Why did he do this? Because the Bible says the heart of men is deceitful. Yeah. It's evil. Yeah. When we look in our hearts, human beings are naturally evil and selfish. Well, there's a tendency, I think, to, in people, they don't want to be they don't want to be so harsh in their thinking of, of humanity. Hmm. The basic anthropology that humans want to have is that you know we are good because somehow, you know, if you say that humans have evil, it, it lessens the value. And I think that's a wrong way of thinking yeah. because the Bible says that God loves the world. He loves people. But yet God uh, says that humans are evil. Yeah. So here's the oxymoron. Well, God didn't create us evil. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll sit down and agree with people that humans originally are not evil. You yeah. Know? yeah. God created us good. He created us perfect. He wanted us to enjoy his presence. He wanted to enjoy his peace, each other's peace. And, and we're not harmony. saying that people don't have the capacity to do good, mm -hmm. even as even though we have also, we, we a sinful that. nature. I, I even think that like people use the fact that humans are generally good as an excuse for the evil. Because like, okay, you know, we're, we're, we're naturally good. I mean, we're, most of us are better. So the evil, it's like, it's okay. You know, we can pass that off because yeah. it's, not, it's not how we were meant to be. It's just like, they always, you know, blame it on, okay, psychological problems. Yeah. So it's all, they always have an excuse for the evil and they never actually pinpoint yeah, you know, because, exactly what the Bible says. Yeah, because one of the things is that, you, you know, like you may meet someone who has bipolar, right? But they, they still are nice people. Yeah. Uh, they still function. They go to work. And you yeah. meet another person who has bipolar and they have behavior problems. Mm -hmm. Now, is the bipolar the problem for their moral behavior? Mm -hmm. Or is it their, their choosing to do evil things mm -hmm. uh, out of the evilness of their heart? Jesus said, out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, mm -hmm. stealing. Mm -hmm. All these things come from an evil heart. So, And again, sometimes what happens is that Christians... People who say they have a Christian worldview or go to church will fall into the thinking of a secular mm -hmm. wrist who basically says that humans are good, where Jesus said, uh, we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have a natural bent to disobey God's laws. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say that we can't do mm -hmm. right, but sometimes even the right we do, we do it for the wrong reasons, yeah, uh, for self-glory, we do it for political interest, and so on and so forth. So a lot of times, you know, uh, there's a negation of what Christ did because if Jesus came to save us not only from the penalty of sin but the power of sin, mm -hmm. then what that assumes is that human beings yeseftun uh, or or inchu betkunink megavor mezi porge. You know, it's a contradiction of logic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, and a lot of the times in in our society, we are a very excuse-oriented society. When people do things. We, uh, we, we, you know, we don't. Try, we're not too harsh, saying, "Hey, what you did was." Well, a therapeutic uh, society. Yeah. Well, well the, and we try to give excuses, like, "Oh, it's not really their fault." Well, no, it is really their fault. Yeah. At one point, they chose to do this. I, yeah. You can have all the problems with you. I have a ton of friends who were brought up in uh, in broken families, you know, who could have become, you know, uh, serial killers and all this stuff and drunkards and all this stuff, but they didn't. Why? Because they chose. Number one, I think, is because Jesus Christ set them. Free. Yeah. Uh, that is ultimately what uh, how they overcame those things. But number two, even within that freedom that Christ gives, there's always the moral choice that you say, okay, I'm not going to do this, or mm -hmm. I am going to do this. Mm -hmm. And there's freedom. Human beings have that. When somebody chooses to do something evil, let's call it evil. Let's not try to go around. But when it's done so, to so, us, yeah. when it's done to us, and this is what I want to focus on, when it's done to us, we say evil. 9-11 happened. How many times did you hear the word evil? Yeah. yeah. People were screaming out on the airways. Yeah, you know, but yet what, we don't what, believe in one of the evil. things that I want to you know say is sometimes you know people tell me that you know Pastor Jack, why are you so angry? You know, I, I hear that a lot. Um, and anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a, I'm not an angry person. I'm angry at things. Yeah, yeah. I um, I'm angry at stuff that happens in this world. Huh? But I'm not an angry person in the sense that I walk around you know cussing people out yeah. and always you know I don't have a bad attitude about yeah. life. Yeah. In a sense, I feel in a sense that I'm liberated mm -hmm. because if you can't be angry about anything how can someone look at the world you know in my profession I'm in the people business yeah. you know I deal with people 
and I and I take a, you know a computer analyst looks at computers constantly. You know, uh, a car technician or or, or whatever, uh, whoever whatever field you're in, you tend to be an expert at. If you're a a, a, a home inspector, you know, um, you tend to know when there's termites yeah. and certain yeah. things wrong with the plumbing because that's what you've been um, trained as a profession to evaluate, and that's why they say that psychologists sometimes have the highest depression rates because they themselves are always analyzing mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. warp condition of human beings. So what I'm trying to say is that there's no way that you can really look at this world from the Britney Spears to the issues that just happened in India, the issue that happened in Kenya, look at it politically, look at it sociologically. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Aborigines right now, I'm gonna talk about this, are, are, are suing the Australian government because from 1910 to 1970, the government was involved in, in uh, assimilating the Aborigines into white communities, so they would take them as babies from their parents from the hospitals oh. and they would literally put them in foster homes. Mm -hmm. I mean this is this is this is headline stuff folks. And what I'm saying is now they're suing and saying you guys owe us money, you know? Uh, and there was over 100,000 aborigine babies uh, being assimilated into white Australian culture. Again, how can you look at the world and look at the brokenness of the world and not be angry? You know the Bible says that Jesus was a man of sorrows, mm -hmm. Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes I get accused because I'm not one of those, you know, uh, smiley, you know, uh, uh, Joel Olstein kind of preachers who always has something good to say. Mm. Um, you know, and, and and let's not talk about hell. Let's not talk about the evilness of the world. You know, God's going to fix every problem. Uh, you know, God does not fix every problem. Sometimes God has allowed sin and death to be in this world. And if you deny that, I mean, that's what Ecclesiastes is about. It's an honest admission of how frail and how um, uh, inconsistent this yeah. world is. Yeah. I mean, and if you don't give people the whole Bible and you only give them, you know, certain portions, you know, um, what you're doing is you're setting them up for failure, yeah. as some pastors are doing, because they, they want to preach, mm -hmm. you know, cookie cutter Christian messages where it's like, um, God loves you, God wants to make your life better, and you're going to be happy and never be sad and angry again. That's not well, true. That's the problem is because we, we're thinking like the secularists. We're thinking that people have these emotional problems, which they do, but that's not the root. Let's get to the root. They have these emotional problems. They have these psychological problems. So we turn the Bible into this emotional psychological book, and like, oh, you know, with Christ all things are possible. You know, we, we throw them these, these uh, phrases. Uh, little catchphrases. Yeah, the, the little catchphrases from the Bible taken out of context when we're not saying, listen, Jesus Christ, you know, I've, I've heard preachers say Jesus Christ came to set you free from, uh, you know, like your financial debts, this, that. No, Jesus Christ came <laughs> to set you free from sin yeah. and death and, 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 and hell. And, and once you're set free from sin, you may start developing a work ethic yeah. and, a, and, and control over your compulsions to not buy everything at Macy's. Exactly. And then you may get out of debt. It takes care of the root. It's our, it's our choice to take care of our actions. That come from. What does the Bible say the fruits of the Spirit are? What's one of the fruits of the Spirit? Self-control. Self -control. If, if you are a person who's, who has not been born again, like Jesus Christ said in John 3, how are you going to have self-control? Exactly. 